Support comes from Mosby Building Arts, a design-build company committed to remodeling the right way. Visit callmosby.com to get project inspiration for any room of your house. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Tuesday, January 21st. I'm Wayne Pratt. Ahead, St. Louis has more than 7,000 vacant buildings. The city plans to demolish many of them, but some will be deconstructed or carefully taken apart. Each job is like a cadaver, right? You you get to dissect the building, uh, get to see how it was put together, how it, how it worked, how it could fail. There is plenty of potential to recover valuable materials like old bricks instead of sending them to the landfill. St. Louis Public Radio's Eli Chen will have that story in just a few minutes. First, the headlines. About one in three jail officers in Missouri show symptoms of depression. That survey is from researchers at St. Louis University. As St. Louis Public Radio's Shayla Farzan reports, younger officers appear to have a higher risk of developing depression. James Dom started working as a jail officer at the City Justice Center in St. Louis nearly a decade ago. He says it can be a challenging work environment, especially for new officers. Dom remembers a conversation he had with his lieutenant soon after he started the job. I was in the break room and he asked how things were going and I just kind of shook my head and he said, don't worry, it gets better. And I asked him, does it get better or do you just get used to it? And he said a little of both. St. Louis University researchers surveyed more than 300 jail employees in Missouri. They found younger officers were much more likely to show symptoms of depression than their older colleagues. Job burnout was also a major factor associated with depression. I'm Shayla Farzan, St. Louis Public Radio. Missouri University of Science and Technology in Rolla is hoping its research will meet the growing demand for high-power electricity. A new lab will test applications of electricity up to 12,000 volts. Electrical engineering professor Mehdi Ferdosi says it's a major safety issue to stray from the standard 110 volts in most household outlets. But if you want to replace it with 1,000 volts, then everybody gets freaked out. So that's actually the research is about, going after higher power applications. Therefore, that necessitates going after higher voltages. Ferdosi says electric transportation, including buses, cars, and light rail, will likely be the first customers for the products developed at the lab. A St. Charles-based brew pub is selling to another local craft brewer after 25 years of operation. Trailhead Brewing will be open until the end of the month before eventually reopening as Schlafly Bankside. Here's St. Louis Public Radio's Corinne Ruff. Trailhead owner Bob Kirkwood approached Schlafly in the late fall about buying his brew business. He was looking for a buyer who would keep up his reputation for quality beer and benefit his staff. Schlafly CEO Fran Caradonna, who's known Kirkwood for more than two decades, says the two quickly came to a deal. She says she's offered all current employees jobs and will maintain Trailhead's character. That includes some menu favorites, like its wood-fired pizza. The move will bring in some changes, like facility improvements and twice as many beer taps. The new location gives Schlafly an opportunity to expand to St. Charles from its St. Louis and Maplewood locations. Schlafly Bankside is expected to open late next month or early March. I'm Corinne Ruff, St. Louis Public Radio. Special coverage of the impeachment proceedings in Washington resumes this morning at 11 on our main on-air signal. The proceedings are expected to last most of the day. Our regular schedule can be streamed at stlpublicradio.org. St. Louis has more than 7,000 vacant buildings. Many of them are scheduled to be demolished, but some will be deconstructed. Workers carefully take apart a building to salvage brick and other valuable materials, and that can reduce waste sent to the landfill. St. Louis Public Radio's Eli Chen went to the site of the city's first deconstruction project. About a dozen workers are taking apart a three-story warehouse in the Van Aveno neighborhood in North St. Louis, and they're close to finishing the job. All that's left standing are the outer walls and parts of rooms on the north side, almost like something took a big, messy bite out of the building. Overseeing the work is Eric Schwartz, the executive director of Refab, a nonprofit that salvages material from buildings. Good morning. Good morning. morning. He says a moving and storage company once operated the warehouse. 
The building was built uh, just after the 1904 World's Fair with uh, World's Fair materials. So nearly all of these materials are going to be given a third life. St. Louis plans to dismantle 30 more buildings later this year by having workers pick out reusable bricks, lumber, and other materials. The St. Louis Development Corporation received $100,000 in grants from the Environmental Protection Agency and the Missouri Department of Natural Resources to study how deconstructing buildings could help reduce waste and create jobs. Refab is the contractor for SLDC's first deconstruction project. Schwartz has overseen more than 30 similar projects, and he says every one is exciting. Each job is like a cadaver, right? You, you get to dissect the building, uh, get to see how it was put together, how it, how it worked, how it could fail. Before the deconstruction process starts, Refab examines the building to see what materials it has, then finds buyers for them. Materials like longleaf yellow pine, which is used to build floors, can only be found these days by salvaging old buildings. Schwartz says they've sold about a quarter million dollars worth of materials from the building in the Van Avenner neighborhood. St. Louis has incredible building materials. You know, we were the largest producer of brick uh, at one time. We, we kind of occupy this unique position because we're kind of just south enough to where we have all that longleaf yellow pine in these buildings, but we also see a good amount of um, other good types of lumber here. So kind of perfect spot for salvage. There's a high demand for reclaimed materials. John Myers is an engineering professor at the Missouri University of Science and Technology in Rolla. He says old brick masonry is worth a lot. Those actually go at a higher market value because of their aesthetic appeal than brand new produced brick masonry. The lumber, joists, brick, and other materials need to be in good condition to be resold, so the workers use their own hands and a telescopic handler. That's a giant forklift that brings down materials in a controlled fashion. Laura Ginn manages environmental programs at SLDC. She says deconstruction can prevent pollutants like lead from being released into the air. So a smash and grab produces a lot of dust. You can't always control where materials are going. You might miss some of the environmental remediation. And the meticulousness that comes with deconstruction ensures that you're capturing all of the potential environmental risks and remediating them. But not every building can or should be deconstructed. Megan Walton is a researcher at the Delta Institute, an environmental consulting group. Walton says St. Louis should deconstruct more buildings, but taking apart a building requires more time, money, and labor. You want to make sure that the material that you would be able to salvage and resell would sort of make up for that increased cost in labor hour and time. Also, heavily damaged buildings that are unsafe to work in for several weeks likely are not good candidates for deconstruction. Deconstructing more buildings in St. Louis will require more skilled workers, and Schwartz wants to help the city train people who live in neighborhoods with vacant buildings. The work could be attractive to people who want to work in the building trades. Each job is different, so you don't always know going into it what exactly is going to be there, how it, exactly it's put together. You peel back layers and you get to, to reveal more and more of how the building was put together, and that is always fun. So while deconstruction is challenging work, Schwartz says it's extremely rewarding. I'm Eli Chen, St. Louis Public Radio. Our David Casares edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.